On this week's MapPy Monday, we're going to explore pathlib a little bit more by seeing how to use it to iterate over directories, match file names and extensions, build paths, and generally make your data access from your scripts a little bit easier. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, we're going to explore Pathlib a little bit more. We used it uh, some in the past couple MetPy Mondays, and for the next two, we're going to explore some more about its functionality and the best practices for building paths from your scripts to your data. So over on the left side in the File Explorer, uh, you can see that I've got several notebooks, some Python files, do something, do something else, multi-core, single core, a data directory, and a scripts directory, along with some miscellaneous text files. So I want to show you what that looks like so you'll know as we're doing this exploration in the, uh, the Python notebook here that you'll know sort of what to expect. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that, Command B. The first thing we're going to do is import the path object from pathlib. So from pathlib, import path. And I'm going to create a path object. I'm going to call it p. That seems to be the convention for pathlib. At least for examples. I would probably prefer to give it a more descriptive name, as you'll see in a little bit. And I'm going to create a path to dot. Dot is the current directory where this script currently resides. So then I'm going to call p dot iterder which means go over everything in my directory and tell me what it is. We're going to iterate over it. And you see that's a generator object. So that doesn't help us a lot. I'm going to wrap it in list so that we can get a full display here. So you can see I've got some notebook files. There are my Python files, my hidden ds underscore store file for my Mac, a data directory. So this is everything that's in my current directory. You can imagine this is useful if you want to know, OK, I want to take every file in this directory and do some process to it. I want to convert temperatures, or I want to do a calculation, or I want to make a plot. But maybe we want to say, what are the directories here? I only want to find the directories. Maybe I have several different projects worth of data, or my files are in directories by date. So we're going to find the directories to do that. There's a method called is underscore dir that returns true or false if it indeed is a directory. So to find these in this list of things, I'm going to use a list comprehension. So I'm going to go ahead and write it out, and then we'll go over how it works. So x for x in p.iterdir, our command that we just used, if x dot is dir. So what this does is for every thing in this iterdir result. We're going to call it x. If it is indeed a directory, so if this returns 2, we're going to append it to this list. If it is not a directory, it will not be appended to the list. So this will result in a list of everything that is a directory in my current directory. And when I run that, we see scripts.ipymb checkpoints. This is uh, the checkpoints stored by your notebooks in this directory. And then my data directory. Maybe I just want to do something to all of my Python files. So I want to find all the Python scripts that are in this directory and do a modification to them, or run them, or run them through a format checker, something like that. We can use glob, which we've seen once before now, to match a, a regular expression. So again, I'm going to use list so that I get a result instead of just a generator object. p.glob and I want to match star.py. So there we see do something else, do something multi-core and single core. So that is matching a pattern. You can match more complicated patterns, and we will in a future video. The next thing I want to do is build a path. So I'm going to call this data path. This is going to be a path to where my data live. P 
is our base path, and we note the data directory is off of that. So pathlib overrides, we would say, the division operator to let us do this and build a valid path. So that's pretty cool. That's a lot nicer than os.join, uh, which is what we've done previously. Also, by setting a path to a variable like this, it means if you change, you move to a different system, or you change how your data are organized, you only have to change it in one place in your script, and that's going to propagate everywhere else instead of hard coding a path. But we'll talk a little bit more about that next week. So now if I look at data path, we see it's just POSIX path data, because that's where we are up to data. We can ask for the absolute path. And there you can see that we are in users, John Lehman, Dropbox, MetPy Mondays, and then data. So that's the absolute path to where I want to go. So then we could see what's in that directory. So data path list, data path dot iterator. So I've got project one, mesonet, project two. So project one path is p slash data slash project one. We can verify that this indeed is a valid path. So I'm going to say project one path dot exists. And that's true. So what about project three path? So p data project three. Well, there is no project three. We can see that up here when I did iterator. So let's verify that we get the correct result from exists. So project three path dot exists. And that is indeed false. So this is a good way to if you've got a pattern that you're trying to go through, you know, say, is this a valid path? Don't try to do anything if it's not a valid path. Or if it's not a valid path, maybe you want to make directories there and then act on that. So I hope that you found this useful. We'll continue next week exploring a little bit more about Pathlib and some of the best practices for how to organize your data and get to it from your notebook or script. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.